It is four o'clock. We are about to kick off. Uh, a very good afternoon, everyone. Joining us today as we embark on day three of our Learning in Interesting Times series. My name is Mpomu Dung. I work at Jake's Harvard Fellowship, and I'm excited to be hosting you today. Um, today, I want us to reflect on the question we usually ask our learners when we go to school visits, and that is, what problems do you want to solve? Uh, this is inspired by an article uh, that Adam Grant, who's an organizational psychologist, wrote where he says, stop asking children what they want to be when they grow up and rather ask them what problems do they want to solve. He further outlines that when you ask them what, question, uh, what problems they want to solve, um, this unlocks their, their innovative spirit and they start thinking about what kind of person they want to be and they also think about all the different things they might want to do in life, basically their purpose. Uh, the world, uh, as you know, it keeps changing and maybe 2020 has seen the biggest jump that forces us to start thinking uh, creatively about how we respond to changes and challenges that we are seeing, especially now. You are sitting at home, um, probably uh, right now it's lockdown, probably counting challenges that have been imposed on us by COVID-19 and lockdown. And most of these problems are, I'd say, around education. And you are here today because you are concerned about getting into university next year. At Jake's Harvard Fellowship, we love problems. <laughs> it gives us the energy because it challenges us every day to look at new ways of doing things. We love challenges because we believe it is in this way that groundbreaking, actually all groundbreaking solutions to life are born this way. What drives us is this idea of, um, of anticipating where the park is going. We take courage in shaping what the future, um, future education trends we look like we do this through identifying challenges and proactively implementing creative and innovative solutions. One of the problems we are solving right now, as you sit and listening to me right now, is addressing your questions around um, accessing university next year, your concerns and your questions around that. Uh, let's just recap because um, this is day three now. Um, this is uh, day three of the three part of the series that I was talking about, where this week we are looking at addressing your questions related uh, to going to university next year. We started on Monday, where we had the Jake Scribble, um board chairperson, Professor Jonathan Janssen, who delivered a powerful motivation on how it's important for you to take responsibility in terms of how you respond to the challenges posed by the pandemic right now. Yesterday, we had vets and they spoke to us about how you can apply to their institution uh, and what makes them unique. Today is day three, where we have a guest from UCT who's eagerly waiting to chat to you about what makes UCT a university to go to um, in, 2020, in 2021. We still have UP and UJ lined up the week beginning June 9. We'll focus on bursary providers and the vision that, um, that they hold for South Africa. Um, this is an invitation for you right now to ensure that you have signed up for all these talks. You also have an opportunity to watch our output videos on YouTube um, as all these talks are made available to you for you to watch afterwards. We are live right now on Zoom and on Facebook. Please share your questions in the comments or Q&A sections, depending on where you are connecting, and we'll attempt to address them before the end of this talk today. Before I introduce my, my guest today, uh, please send those quick WhatsApps if you have on Facebook and share uh, this live stream with them. Um, yesterday, Vets highlighted a number of inspiring people that have graduated from their university to look out for. Today, we will hear what makes UCT different and how they are responding to the challenges posed by COVID-19. Uh, 
Uh, we have Dununzi Hatuse, who's our guest from UCT. He's a student recruitment manager. We are excited to have him speak to us today. Welcome, Putina. And um, as you set up, I do have a, I'm, I'm going to welcome you with a question today. And I would like to know from you, uh, Putina, what makes UCT different? And why would you encourage these young people watching today to apply to your institution? Um, good afternoon, Mpo, and Moloeni uh, Kuninonke Babuke Lingalemfakwemini. Uh, my name is Tenumzi Haduse, as you've put it, I'm the student recruitment manager of the University of Cape Town. Uh, getting to your question, um, yesterday, or in fact the day before, when you started with all the webinar, Professor uh, Janssen was speaking, and then I put something out of him when he said, Every generation inherits the world. It's never made. And it does so by becoming the trustees of that world. So what I believe at, at UCT, being the top university for quite a number of times, which has been uh, put there by top ranked in the African US top university, by the QS World University, by the Times Highland uh, uh, high, 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 Higher Education. So we, as the people who are at UCT, we need to maintain that sort, so that in all what happens, we keep UCT at the top. And again, looking at the time where leadership is such a problem, we've got a conundrum now when it comes to the leadership how unique UCT is being led by women. We have our chancellor, Dr. Precious uh, Muloi Mutsepe. We've got the VC, Professor Mamukhedi, and the DVCs, all of them. So what more could you ask for? Then for those who want to come to UCT, I would say this, um, uh, 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 the COVID-19, it has showed us how we can try to make our lives better. It has shown the inequalities that we have in the world. So it is very, very empirical for those who are doing metric to choose an institution that is not only going to teach them degrees, but is also going to empower them with some skills so that when they leave their universities, they are able to amass and get some work so that they could change their lives. They could change and make impact to their families. So in that instance, institutions like UCT, they come and teach you and make you realize that the world is your oyster. I'm trying to share my presentation in poor here quickly. Just give me one second. Thank you. Thank you, Kunamzi. That was really great. I'll give you a second just to um, share the screen then. Good. There we go. So as I said at the beginning, if I may go on, I've got this presentation by the University of Cape Town and I'm gonna break it into three parts, whereby in the first part, I'll be talking about an overview of the university itself. Then I'm gonna talk about the six different faculties the university offers. Then my last part will be the crux of the matter. While respecting the social distancing, one can still join the University of Cape Town. But the question is, how do you do that? So without any further ado, I will start with my first point. The University of Cape Town is the leading institution in the country, offering a wide range of undergraduate programs. We're sitting at about 29,000 students who hail from all over South Africa. And then we've got a fair representation in over 100 countries. This makes the University of Cape Town to be the melting pot of the diverse people. If one could sit in front of the Sarah Batman Hall, 
on those stairs and listen to the conversations of different students during their free lecture periods, of course. What a pleasure. It is a true diversity. So our students bring into our institution a range of different values. They bring different perspectives and they contribute immensely to the unique nature of the institution. Coming to the different faculties the university offers. So what I've done is to create an imagination of how these six faculties uh, would share a small pie of about 4,200 first years, which the university admits from 60,000 applications we receive. That's a lot of competition. So each faculty is represented by its Pantone color. So here we go. We start with commerce being yellow. Commerce offers two undergraduate degrees, a three year bachelor of commerce become, or a four year bachelor of business science. We call it the Biba side. So both programs are offered in a variety of disciplines to cater for the interests of our students and the employment needs of our country. All undergraduates are available as mainstream. And we do offer the Educational Development Unit, which comes as an extended program or the augmented programs to students who may have experienced gaps or disparities in their educational or life experience. The second faculty the University of Cape Town offers is the Faculty of Engineering and the Built Environment. I hope you are looking at my pie. How has it shrunk now in the green color? This uh, has a range of specializations as well, namely architectural studies, planning and geomatics, chemical engineering, civil engineering, and etc. The faculty boasts with two different mechatronics programs which are offered. One mechatronic is offered under the Department of Electrical Engineering. The other mechatronics is offered under the Department of Mechanical Engineering. The third faculty, keep an eye on my pie, is the Health Sciences. Before I get to the Health Sciences, um, I wanna announce the breaking news to all the metrics that UCT has done away with personal report. Uh, in the old new, because now in the old normal, that is pre-COVID, we used to request all applicants who are applying to health sciences to give us a personal report. And these used to be uh, the list of, or, or, or the number of hours that one has acquired or any other accolade one has gotten from a school, be it the top achiever. So they were making up what we call the personal report. So UCT has done away with that to the extent that this, the faculty point score now has dropped from 1,000 to 900. So the faculty offers a wide range of professional degrees, namely your audiology, your physiotherapy, your occupational therapy, speech and language pathology, as well as medicine. These programs are very selective and the faculty, faculty draws quite a number of applications from a limited spaces. For example, for medicine, we amass a total of 5,000 plus applications for only a total of 220 spaces available. Again, it's quite a lot of competition. So each degree program here, it will expose you to a range of disciplines that you may pick as your specialization after you have completed your degree of choice. The fourth faculty is humanities. This is the largest faculty at UCT, offers courses from arts, from social sciences, from creative arts. It offers both general degrees, whereby you are allowed to even go and grab some majors from other faculties like the information technology. You do a BA in informatics, or you can do law, or you can do environmental and the geographical sciences should you meet the requirements of that particular faculty. Also, it offers the named degrees, like the Bachelor of Social Sciences, the Bachelor of Fine Arts, they're all within that family of the Faculty of, 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 of Humanities. 
But what I like more about humanities is that it speaks against the stereotype that people would think that a degree will define you. You can come to UCT and do a three-year program majoring in psychology and film and television. And then after three years, you decide to go into commerce and venture there and take a postgraduate diploma in marketing. Then we find you working for the corporate, though your degree was humanities. The second last faculty, ladies and gentlemen, is the faculty of law. I believe you have seen how shrunk my cake or pie has. In the faculty of law, there are two routes that you can take to get into law at UCT. It's either straight LLB from high school, do your four years. After four years, you either decide if you want to become an advocate or you want to take the route of becoming an attorney. Or the most popular route now is the combined stream of the LLB together with uh, another degree, either from humanities or from commerce. Then you take some of the law courses in your second year, assuming you have got an average of 65%. The last faculty is the faculty of science. In the faculty of science, these are the people that I believe we need at this moment, specifically with the COVID-19. This is the faculty that can open up a range of possibilities. This is the faculty that can make new discoveries to the change challenges that are facing the world, like the COVID-19. It offers a range of specializations in astronomy, in biological sciences, in oceanography, and so on and so forth. But that is my menu from the University of Cape Town. Very interesting menu, specifically that we're counting now about three to four days to get to downgrade to level three, so that at least you can go to the shops and look for something to, to, to grab. So the question now is metrics. In the beautiful menu that I've drawn from UCT, do you have the points to get in? Let's get to it. The admission criteria at UCT. Uh, UCT, now, what happens, we, 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 we divide our, our applicants into three brands. So we apply a weighting to the marks of all the national senior certificate applicants. And then we could categorize them in those three brands. The brand A, this is a guaranteed admission to applicants who have met the very stringent admission criteria. Then we've got band B. In band B, we adjust the faculty point score to all the South African National Senior Certificate candidates to arrive at what, at what we call the weighted point score. So this is where the bulk of admissions happens at UCT. We admit applicants from a rank of scores based on school performance, and then we weigh those scores by factors that disadvantage them from one another. So this advantage could be coming from a school or it could be coming from home. So these disadvantage percentages, they sit between zero and 10 in five faculties or zero and 20 in the faculty of health sciences. The last band is band C. In band C, we aim to create a diversity of social class in the first year classes. How do we do that? We encourage the number of the first time generation university students and those who are coming from poorly resourced schools or disadvantaged household. And then we categorize these applicants according to the categorization of their parents' race under the apartheid. So this allows us to have a proxy for the applicant's race, which we use to make selective admissions to meet the specific ethic enrollment targets. Now, coming to the points calculation, how do we do the points calculation? UCT has got the highest number of points in the whole country. But what we do and how we do the points calculation, I believe is very fair. To calculate your admission point score, you add the six subjects, percentages, excluding the life orientation, and the scores for all the advanced programs. So your admission point score is sitting at 600 for four faculties. 
if you are applying for the faculty of health sciences, your faculty point score is the sum of the admission point score together with the percentages obtained for the NBTs. So if you are applying for the faculty of health sciences, again, your faculty point score will be sitting at 800 because we double the scores that you obtained for the mathematics and the physical science. So for applicants who are doing more than six subjects, some applicants are good out there, hey? So walala wasala, if you are not doing as much as you could. So what we do, we're gonna score for the best six subjects as well. And then we grab and look for subject requirements for those programs that you are applying for. So now let's do this quick exercise with me applicants. If your admission point score happens to be less than 400, so please, after this presentation, go and grab your latest results and do the calculation. So what happens now? Your admission point score is less than 400. Make a short prayer. As you are praying, because you are sweating, you want to come and join the university under that mountain. You want to sit in those stairs in front of the Sarah Apartman Hall, fan yourself, and then you repeat this prayer after me there is still a big chance to get to that top university in Africa, but I will need to work hard. Amen. So our applicant admission point score, it starts at 400. So that is why I'm saying if you are less than 400, there's still a chance, so you need to keep on improving. So there is another question that keep coming here is the issue of the subject. Do they attract the same number of points? The answer is yes. There is a common question around the mathematics core and the mathematics light. For example, if you get 80% for mathematics, you get 80 points. If you get 80% for mathematical literacy, you get 80 points. The only difference between the two is that if you have got mathematical literacy, there are doors in which you can knock and knock and knock and they will never open. But if you have got mathematics, careful again, metrics, yes, you can knock, the doors will open, but they will only open if and only if your mathematics is sitting at 60% and above. So let's talk about the national benchmark test, which is uh, the bone of contention at the moment. All applicants to the undergraduate programs who are schooling in South Africa and who live in South Africa, they must write the national benchmark test. These national benchmark tests indicate your readiness for tertiary education. So these tests help us to identify the key areas where you may need the academic support. So at the moment, with the COVID-19 disruptions, UCT still maintains that you need to write your national benchmark test. If there is any change that could happen, the university will communicate and explain with regard to the national benchmark tests. What else do we need? We need portfolios. We need auditions. If you are applying for architecture, for instance, or you are applying for fine arts, so you need to present a portfolio. Again, if you are applying for a program in humanities, like theater and performance, like dance, we'll be needing you to do the auditions. Quick one, when it comes to the accommodation, uh, UCT, we have quite a number of student residences that we offer. They are catered accommodation for first years. We've got the random allocation because a lot of people, they come and say, I want to be in this particular residence because my mother stayed in there or my father stayed in there. The, uh, the allocation is random. We offer the single and the shared rooms depending on how old that particular residence is residence is. For instance, residences like Russia, Michelle, they will have the shared rooms. Then what is the eligibility criteria that we use? At first, we look at the high flyers. If you are a high flyer, you're sitting at about uh, 
540 points. That's a 90% average. You are guaranteed to get into the residences. But what if you are not like myself? What happens? Then we look at vulnerability again. Vulnerability are those who are on financial aid. So we're gonna get them into the residences. That is why we even give them laptops. All those who have qualified for NSFAS, they will get into the residences and they will be given a laptop also by the university. And then the last el eligibility that we look at is the issue of age. If you are turning 18 in February of 2021, or in February of 2022, since there are also grade 11s who could be listening, then we believe that you are a minor and then we're gonna give you a space in the residences. Then let's come to how do you find your, your studies? UCT will offer three types of scholarships. So the first one is the entrance scholarship. There's no application needed. Your marks will do the trick. We've got a published criteria. So each faculty will give their recipients based on their performance. We don't give scholarship based on one single subject that has got a 90% and above. It is coordinated based on the total applicant point score that you receive. And it differs from one faculty to another. The criteria is on the prospectus. This, the second uh, scholarship is the vice chancellor scholarship. This also does not need any application. It has got a published criteria. These are the top achievers, the Olympiads, the top 10 in the whole country from the national senior certificate or from the IEB. These are the type of uh, students that we believe they should come and join us under that mountain. The last one is the sports scholarship. Sports scholarship is given to men and women who have done exceptionally well for their country as well as their provinces as well. So in that instance, we say you must have represented the country or you must have represented the province in order for you to qualify for the sports scholarship and you apply for that. The last one is the financial aid. This is the money that is given by the government of South Africa to all those who are financial needy. The threshold is sitting at 350 up to 6,000. So all those people, they will get what we call the free education. That is the cohort, I was saying, we're giving them the laptops as well. The last one, as I said at the beginning, maintaining the social distance, but UCT, we are live online with our application. As you apply, what do we need? We need your grade 11 final results. Even if they were not good, you need to apply and then keep improving. So when you apply in the same application, you apply for your two programs that you're applying for, the first choice and the second choice, these two programs are looked at simultaneously to the extent that if you have got enough points, you could be sitting with two offers. How nice it is when we write a letter and say, dear Mr. Matthew Strauss, we understand that we, you have got two offers from UCT. So which one will you be taking? So that will be at the end of the year. So in the same application, we ask you to indicate if you want to be in the residences. Then within 48 hours, you receive an email with your student number and their login credentials. I've spoken about the NBTs already that they are still compulsory with UCT until we get any sort of information from somewhere. So that logging in, it helps you that at the comfort of your home, you are able to update your application with further results as and when you receive them. You monitor your application online Based on your grade 11, if you did well in grade 11, you may receive what we call a conditional offer. So the conditional offer means we take you to be the student of the University of Cape Town, provided you maintain this performance at the end of the year. Then after that, we wait for your final results. Please, we have got an agreement with the Department of Basic Education that we shall receive your results straight and download them. So there's no need to submit your results at the end of the year. We only request your interim results once 
after the trials, we're gonna get the results ourselves. Then let's assume you have gotten into UCT. Then in January, again, you have to choose which choice are you taking? Remember you had two choices, the first choice and the second choice. Then after that is a bliss, you'll be joining us under the devil's peak in Cape Town for the orientation is two weeks of orientation. We start by a fleet of about 30 buses, will come and fetch you from the airport or the bus station. You meet your orientation leaders from various faculties in their Penton colors. The house committees and the sub wardens together with the wardens are working to welcome you to your new home away from home. Why are we doing this? It is because you have made it. In conclusion, I would say South Africa has 26 universities. And if you decide to study here, our country, and UCT happens to offer the programs you intend pursuing, there is no other destination except UCT. My name is Tenum Zehaduse, and thank you very much. Ooh, thank you, Tenumzi. Now, I feel like I have to go to UCT. Uh, I suppose like it's where you want to be. Want, want to be. So, Tenumzi, before, there's a number of questions that are coming in. While I compiled them, I would like to know if there's anything you want to emphasize around what measures UCT has put in place to ensure, um, to ensure that applications and admissions um, isn't affected by lock, the effects of lockdown. So you have mentioned personal reports being scraped off, people having to, uh, uh, to submit grade 11 reports. Is there anything that you would like to emphasize there? No, we, we are continuing import to assist all applicants. For example, we are writing to all of the, our applicants. Uh, we, we're conducting sessions uh, over Zoom, or we can even call them if they do not have access to Zoom to say, hey, Tenumze Aduse, we understand you have applied to UCT. What are the issues? What are the problems that you have? So all that is, is, is given so that they could do. It's a platform that we are, we are using at the moment. Great stuff. Um, let's take a few questions. The first one is, if you are provisionally accepted into UCT, must you accept the provisional offer even though you are not definitely sure that you will attend UCT? This is uh, from someone on Zoom. Yes, that's a, that, that's, a, that's a fair question. With UCT, there is no fee that is paid around your application. So if, for instance, you have got an offer, you can accept that offer, there won't be any penalty, it's okay, because we understand that sometimes most of the students, they've got multiple uh, 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 offers from other universities. So then you accept the offer, there is nothing that is going to do to you. If it happens now in January, it's then that we're going to, we, at least we request you to say, UCT, you have given me this offer, but I'm afraid I'm no longer coming, I'm going to this institution so that we are able now to, to, to withdraw your offer. Great stuff. Um, something similar, this one says, I applied, this is Tan, Tanzil, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. I applied at UCT last week and my second choice let me know that they need my NBT results, but I did not uh, hear from my first choice. Do they reply separately and should I follow up? Thank you very much. Again, as I said, uh, what happens is that it depends. Some faculties, they might be quicker than others. When I was explaining the issue of the NBTs, uh, you find that other faculties, they use the NBTs to add to the, uh, the, what we call the, the admission point score. Other faculties, they will tell you the range that you need to perform at. So because of that, it may delay in terms of the response from one faculty to another. So in this instance, that particular applicant, I believe I've shared my email address, you can chat to me, but the other faculty is going to respond anyway. It's just as a matter of timing. Awesome. This one is asking, 
Does UCT accept non-South African uh, citizens for MBCHB? In the case of MBCHB, one, you must be a non-South African if and only if you have got a permanent residence. If you do not have a permanent residence of South Africa, I'm afraid not. And it's not only UCT, all the medical schools in South Africa. They take South Africans or permanent residents. Mm. Thanks, Bertina. I must tell you, it's a lot, lot, lot of questions. And um, due to time, unfortunately, we have to end there. But before I let you go, I have a question for you. I'd like to know, do you have an, a, a favorite teacher at high school or primary school in your schooling years? Uh, if you can remember them, uh, can you just shout, uh, give them a shout out to say this was a favorite teacher and tell them why? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Um, it, it would be, yeah, from, from my high school, yes. I had a favorite teacher from my school. It would be uh, Mrs. Nobel and Begela. Uh, she was my biology teacher when I was doing uh, my standard nine. Oh my goodness, that reveals my age. It's grade 11 now. So when I was doing my standard nine, um, she, she was strict, very strict. Uh, one, I don't know how many times has she uh, asked me to leave her class and then I would stand by there on, on the window and respond to her questions. But what, 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 what I learned out of her is that she saw something in me that I, I was not even aware of. So I could say today, because of the seed that she planted, because of the selflessness that she brought, because she, this is the person who would be chasing me out of her classroom, but on the same breath, she would be the one who's asking me to bring the classwork books. She would be asked, is the one who's going to tell me that I am destined to get a degree. By then, I didn't even know what a degree is. So, it's shout out to her. I am who I am because of her encouragement. Uh, thank you so much for spending this day, this afternoon with us. Um, so you've heard from Mutunumzi, his favorite teacher. If you think you also have that ability to see that thing about people, uh, or if you think the idea of solving problems in education, the education space thrills you, Maybe you want to be an expert teacher, an educational leader, or educational entrepreneur. We are looking for you. Our applications are on our website. Uh, teachers and leaders are also encouraged to nominate a superstar by following a simple process on the website. We've come to the end of our conversation today, which I think was really great. Set your reminders for 4 p.m. tomorrow and catch me as I speak to, uh, to our guest from University of Johannesburg. This is a reminder again that you ensure you apply to more than one university. And I'd like to repeat with Tenumza's words to say there's still a big chance to get to, he said, his university, but I'd say any university, but you need to work hard. Do not let, let down, uh, uh, lockdown let you down or discourage you work hard, apply to as many universities as you can. Um, subscri subscribe to our YouTube channel since we'll be sharing all these videos afterwards. Uh, follow us on social media as well to stay abreast of all the exciting things that we keep doing um, at JGF. This concludes um, day three of the series of the series. And thank you for tuning in with Bongagakulu and UCT Siablela Gakulu. Have a lovely afternoon, everyone. Let's meet again tomorrow. Toodles. Thank you. Toodles. Bye.